What's happening today, everybody? This is Brandon here coming to you from my studio. So I've been working on this larger painting um, that I've got going on here. And for this video, I just wanted to quickly come into this area and show you what I'm doing when I'm putting on some highlights of these are essentially rhododendron leaves back here. But anytime you want to put some highlights on some distant kind of bushes or trees or anything like that that's got some leaf texture to it, I just wanted to show you how I'm doing this. And so I'm created basically a, a background color with a larger brush that I just globbed in some darker values of greens and browns and blacks back there. And now I'm coming back in here with a smaller one over the top as I move forward to create my leaf highlights. So I wanted to quickly show you how I am doing that. So I'm in the middle of working on this much larger painting here, but for this particular video, I want to focus on what I've got going on with this area here, which this is a set of rhododendrons that I'm working on on a river bank, uh, like a mountain stream river here, and some rhododendrons I'm putting on along the background. And I just want to show you my process that I've got going on for that. Now if you take a look at this area in here, what I have done is I have come in here with basically a three quarter inch wash brush and I have gone into a mixture of basically sap green or grass green, whatever green you want to use, and some raw umber to darken it up, maybe a touch of black to darken it up. And I have used this wash brush to create the background textures that I have there. So I've mixed up these dark values of green, black, brown together. And then I have come in this area and I have turned and rotated this brush to create this background texture for these rhododendrons. So just basically turning it, rotating it, blotching it in here all along this back area here to create this texture. That's all I have done at this point. There may be some more browns showing in a few areas than others because I'm not mixing this paint entirely um, on the brush to create these effects. I'm just kind of globbing it out there and creating these background textures. So that's what I have done to get to this point. Now once I have created these background textures, I'm switching over to this little small 5 aught spotter brush here. And I'm working my way from the furthest away forward and I just use the tip of the brush to put in leaf textures and highlights on the furthest away stuff. And as I'm moving forward here, I'm starting to use the entire spotter brush uh, bristles to create my individual leaf highlights. And all I'm doing is going into my greens again, adding a little bit of yellow ochre to it. And you can see my messy, crazy palette here. Somebody wanted to see what my palette looked like, and I warned him. I said, look, it's a mess. <laughs> Basically, I've just got a paper towel down here with a piece of wax paper and these acrylics on here. And I'm mushing into this green, bringing in a little bit of this yellow ochre into it, and I'm just kind of rolling that little spotter brush into it. And then I'm coming in here, and I am touching and turning and bending that little spotter brush to create individual leaf textures on top of those darker backgrounds. And in one little area like this, I will use the color that I picked up on the brush that time. And when I come back in here now, I'm just gonna change it up a little bit because I'm gonna add maybe a little more green to it, maybe in a touch, tiny bit of raw umber into there. So my value of this is gonna be slightly different. Now as I come in here and touch this brush into a few more places. So I'm not getting a monotone, consistent green highlight color all the way through here. If you look at that carefully, you'll see there's a wide variety of different, basically, leaf colors coming in back there because I'm varying the amounts of green and yellow ochre, tiny bit of raw umber, maybe tiny bit of titanium white with each pass. So I'm getting different 
I'm getting different color values back here that are just enough to keep things interesting and not monotone where you've got multiple bushes back here that I'm dealing with that are all catching the light different ways and this is a, an autumn fall kind of scene which these rhododendrons are for the most part evergreen but they do have different amounts of chlorophyll and things in them so you're going to get a variety of uh, you know greens and yellows and highlights in them from one to another so I don't want it to be the same all the way through here that's what you're trying to avoid and I'm just gonna work my way all the way down these rhododendrons as I'm doing this but I wanted you to see my process here again I'm just mixing different amounts each pass of greens yellows so I'm heavy on the yellow on this one and I just turn change the angle that I hit the canvas with this little spotter brush make these leaf highlights right over the top of your dark areas Another thing that I'm doing is when I first put my paint on my brush here, I try to start on the outer edge of where I want a limb to be protruding out here, catching the light. And as that paint or my brush loses that paint, I will move back up away from there to create that essential fade back into where it's darker and the leaves are not catching as much light. So you can see that area out here where I started. It's a little brighter than when I moved back into here as my brush was losing that paint. So again, I go back into my mix, change up, maybe add a little more yellow to something. And I'll come in here, let's say, and I'll start out on this area here where I want it to be the brightest. And start dropping in a few random leaf highlights. And then as my brush now starts to lose that paint, I will move up and back into where this limb is coming from. It's a little deeper into the bush, into the tree, not catching as much of the light back in there. And then that gives me my natural fade of highlight. So you can see now where I started back over here in the distance and I am now moving my way up here and I will repeat this process to finish out that entire set until I have that whole back row of rhododendrons on this painting completed the way I want.
all right so that was my process of doing the leaf detail there on those distant uh, trees and rhododendrons and bushes back there with a few little highlights of the individual limbs and sticks in there towards the end so i hope you enjoyed watching along with that until next time happy painting everybody